Hello, and welcome to James Plays Games. Today I'm playing the playable prototype for Indivisible, the latest game from Skullgirls developers Lab Zero Games. Like with Skullgirls, the signature style of animation is prevalent in the characters, environments, and combat style. While the prototype has no storyline, it is more of a proof of concept, showing off the gameplay, characters, and enemies. You start off as Aina, a female warrior type character who really fits the main protagonist mold. And as you progress, you are joined by three others, an archer named Zebe, a swordsman named Tungar, and a mage named Rosmi. Many of the characters already have voice actors, which is a nice touch for what is essentially a playable demo. But the most noticeable was Zebe, who had a whole slew of arrow-related puns. Oh, the combat style reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy XIII with the ATV gauge emptying and refilling after each attack. Back when I played Final Fantasy XIII, I found myself button mashing, even though I knew pressing X a thousand times wouldn't really help in the long run. In the beginning of the Indivisible prototype, I didn't button mash at first, but I found myself doing so once I started unlocking the other characters. That being said, I much prefer the way Indivisible handled the combat system, as the attacks are more practical and stylistic, and it's much more satisfying when you defeat an enemy. As you progress through the prototype, you'll get an axe that you can use in battle, but you can also use it to climb walls, which is one of the most satisfying features in a game that I've played recently. You can also wall jump if there are two walls close enough to each other, but if they're not, using the axe will work just as well. I know that this is just a prototype, so specific details in the final game will likely be altered to maintain game balance, but the boss fights in this game, as few as there were, were absolutely terrifying. Especially that final boss that took me about 5-7 to seven tries to even get close to defeating it. Had I not finally taken care of it, I would have been very disappointed that I couldn't finish the prototype, but with enough time and perseverance, it finally got what was coming to it. Overall, I really like the Indivisible prototype, and I recommend it to anyone who's looking for a really interesting turn-based side-scrolling platformer. The final game is currently being crowdfunded, so go check it out if you're interested. James Plays Games is a Pixelation Entertainment production. Go check out our site, and if you're interested in joining our staff of writers and content producers, feel free to submit an application. What should I play next? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.